Hello everyone, welcome to another Quad Education Test Prep Fundamentals video. My name is Tom, and today we're talking about a really niche topic from the ACT math test. It's something that really doesn't appear very often, and when you see it, it can really throw you off. But it's so interesting that I really wanted to talk about it today. That topic is recursive sequences and how they relate to explicit equations. So let's take a look. Okay, recursive versus explicit. Very intimidating vocab today, so what does that actually mean? Well, something that's recursive means that it's just an operation that's being performed over and over again. So if I started with the number 1 and added 5 each time I moved to the next value in the sequence, then that would be recursive. So add 5, add 5, add 5. So, you know, 6, 11, 16, whatnot. Now, you can get really, really complicated with recursive functions really quickly, but since this is already a foreign topic, the ACT definitely will not do that. And it'll always be pretty simple, or at least as far as the operation of the uh, equation itself will be simple. So you'll see something like adding three every time, and nothing like uh, doubling it, then subtracting one, and taking 60% of that cube root of that, or something like that. Something, you know, multiple operations at the same time would be out of scope. And so before we look at the elements of a recursive formula, what is an explicit formula? Well, that's the easy part. And it's not explicit like you hear with explicit lyrics or whatnot. It's just the explicit formula is a fancy name for the equations that we're used to looking at. So in the example I gave where the first term is 1 and then each term after that is 5, well, that explicit formula would be linear because if you're increasing by 5 every time, it sounds like a constant and it sounds like a linear equation. Uh, as for specifically what that equation would be, well, we'll come back to that in a minute here. But anyway, what are the elements of a recursive formula? Well, there are actually different general forms for recursives, and they'll depend on the composition of the explicit formula that it's based off of. So a linear explicit formula will have a different recursive formula than something like a quadratic explicit. But it's always going to be you know, pretty, pretty general and, and usually pretty based off of linear. So what I've done here for this first one is just sort of shown what that really complicated example that I just mentioned a second ago would be. So this is taking a value and then doubling it, and then subtracting 1 from it, cube rooting it, and then taking 60% of that. So that's the way that would look like, by the way, if you're curious. But it's going to be something much more straightforward, like the term a sub n. So that's how this is read, by the way. a sub n. That's to say, whatever term we're on. So a sub 1 would be the first term. a sub 2 would be the second term. So a sub n, any term, is equal to a sub n minus 1. So that's the term before it. So the term before a sub 2 would be a sub 1, because the first term comes 1 before the second term. And then we're going to add the difference. So the arithmetic sequence just means that we're adding a constant and not multiplying by a constant. Multiplying by a constant would be a geometric sequence. Maybe one day I'll do that, but it really doesn't show up in these tests. So probably not. But by the way, this difference here in terms could be positive or negative. You know, Adding a negative is just subtracting. And then we say a sub 1 is a constant. So that's where we start. So a second ago, I said, if we're increasing by 5, and then we started at 1, that would be a sub n minus 1 plus 5. That's going to be the general form, where the first term is, sorry, I just wrote the letter d there. That's a constant, but I know actually what the number is now. So I'll say we're increasing by five every time, and then we're starting at the value of one. So our first term is one, increasing by five every time. But that's basically what this means here. And so I think really the big hurdle is just getting past this little subscript here, what that means. And so just to review, if it's a one, that means it's the first term. Now, not the number one, but that's saying the first term in the sequence is whatever the previous term in this case would be plus or minus a constant. And then we define what the first term in the sequence was, so we knew where to start. because we didn't know where we were starting, we'd just be adding 5 and, you know, just like a linear equation, if you don't know where the intercept is, then you don't really know where you are. But once we've defined, you know, how much we're increasing by, and then also where we start, we can have a really good idea of where we would be at any point. So that's a good amount of talking for these, and hopefully what I've done here to explain has made it more uh, straightforward rather than less straightforward. So let's do a couple of practice problems and see if what we've said makes sense. Okay, we've got two here. We're just going to go through one at a time. So this is the first one. Take a look and see what you can do. Okay, let's take a look. So it asks, which of the following expressions, sorry, which of the following expresses the recursive formula above in explicit form? So we are told that we start at the value of 6, and that every term after that we are going up by 4. So 
that's telling us that our slope, so we're basically going up, we have a term, and next term is up four from there, so we're going over one and up four, and that means our slope is four. So we can get rid of everything with a slope of six, and now I have to decide where we start. And so this is where, you know, I sort of borrowed this from uh, one of the fit questions in the 50s in the ACT math. And I suspect most people will have said E because, oh, first term there. But the thing about a linear equation is we don't start at the first term. We actually start at the zeroth, the zero value. So this first, first in quotes here, first term, we have six and we're going up by four. So that's starting at the value of 1, 6. And we go up 4 and be at 2, 10. But we don't start at the first term in a linear equation. We start at 0. So actually, back 4 would be starting at the value of 2. And so that's where we get d. So we have this nice linear equation that we've mapped for this recursive, but when we move it back to a linear equation, we have to account for the fact that we're starting at zero and not one. So very good question there. And let's move on to the next question. Okay, here's our next one. See what you can do with this one. Okay, so if the third term in the sequence defined above is four, what is the sixth term? And so there's a lot of stuff we can do here. I'm just going to kind of go, all right, we're starting at three, and then we want to go fourth term, fifth term, and then sixth term. So the third term is 4. And so then if we wanted to go to the next one, it's defined as we take the previous term, we multiply it by 3, and we add 2 times n, not sub n, but n the number minus 1. So in the case of the first, or sorry, the fourth term here, a sub n minus 1 is going to be 4. So 4 times 3 and then add 2, and then n, which is 4, so 4 minus 1 is 3, and so that's going to be, so 3 times 4 is 12, and 2 times 3 is 6, so 12 plus 6 is 18. And now I'll clear this out because we need to do exactly the same thing again for 5, so with the fifth term, that's 3 times the previous term, which is 18, and then we're going to add 2 times 4 minus, so 5 minus 1 is 4. So 3 times 18 is 54 plus 8, and that's going to be 62. Okay, 62. Okay, let's erase this out and do it again. And I did, you know, for full disclosure, look up what, you know, we're going to do here 62 times 3 is so I didn't you know you don't need to know this just off the top of your head and this is an ACT question you can always use your calculator on it so just let me know so here with 62 we're going to do so I'm sorry for 6 we're going to do 3 times 62 plus 2 times 5 so that's going to be 168 is what 3 times 62 is one sorry 186 and then plus 10 is 196 and so an interesting thing about the answers here is you'll notice that um, the previous answer is 62, which like, so C there is what we had for the fifth term. And then if you're wondering, this is what the seventh term is. And a lot of the time, that is what they'll do with this test is they'll, you know, if you can get how to translate and do the operation, they'll kind of give you a sequence of the correct, you know, in sequence outcomes. And you just got to kind of pick up which one it is you actually want. So you can definitely avoid some work here if you can just sort of look at the answers and notice the trend. Okay, that's it for this video. Even though recursive versus explicit sounds kind of exotic, and when you see the recursive equation in the test, it can look a little unusual. But if you know that you're just looking at some specific instructions for how to move from one step to another, then these are actually kind of helpful. Speaking of which, if you found this material helpful, we hope that you will like and share the video and subscribe to Quad Education. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.